Good morning, students. Good morning, ma'am. Today, we have an interesting topic of biology, the fundamental unit of life. Have you ever heard this? Yes, ma'am. We are going to learn about it today. So, Anu, can you tell me the fundamental unit of life is? Ma'am, the fundamental unit of life is, sir. Right. So, today's title is the fundamental unit of life. Cell is the fundamental unit of life. Also, it is the basic, structural and functional unit of life. It means a cell is capable of independent existence and can carry out all the functions necessary for a living being. If we talk about the history of discovery of the cells, we came to know that Robert Hooke was the first to discover cell in 1665 in Cox Lies with the help of primitive microscope. A. V. Leeuwenhoek in 1674 was the first to discover free living cells in pond water with the help of with the improved microscope. Robert Brown discovered the nucleus in the cell in 1831. Parkinje coined the term protoplasm for the fluid substance of the cell in 1839. The discovery of electron microscope in 1940 made it possible to study the structures of cell organelles. Any doubts till now? Anyone? Ma'am, why is the cell called a structural and functional unit of life? A cell is capable of carrying out all the life functions such as nutrition, excretion, respiration, etc. Hence, a cell is called the functional unit of life. Additionally, the cell is the smallest unit of life and all the living beings are made up of cells. Hence, a cell is called the structural unit of life. Interesting! It means cell is very crucial for the life. Correct, Anand. So, can anyone tell me which scientist coined the term cell and how? Yes, ma'am, I can. Cell was discovered by Robert Hooke in 1665. He observed the cell in a cork slice with the help of a primitive microscope. The cork slice resembled the structure of a honeycomb. Hooke called these boxes as cells. Now, the next topic is cell theory. Cell theory proposed by Skeldin in 1838 and Squan in 1839, Virchow in 1855, made further addition to the theory. The theory states that all living organisms, that is plants and animals, are composed of one or more cells. Cell is the basic unit of life. All cells arise from pre-existing cells. Cells come in all shapes and sizes, while most of the cells are spherical in shape. Most of the cells are microscopic in size. Or we can say, it is impossible to see them with naked eyes. Some cells are fairly large. For example, a neuron in human body can be as longer as 1 meter. The smallest cell varies from 0.1 micrometer to 0.5 micrometer and is found in bacteria. On the other hand, the largest cell measures 170 mm into 130 mm and is the egg of an ostrich. Is there any problem with both of you? Ma'am, we learn about cell. Is there any basis of classifying organisms? Good question, Rohit. On the basis of numbers of cells, organisms are of two types. They are unicellular organism and multicellular organisms. Unicellular is made up of two words. That is uni means single and cellular means cella or small room. It means unicellular organisms are single-celled organism 
which perform all the functions. For example, amoeba, paramecium, bacteria. Multicellular is also made up of two words. That is, multi means many and cellular means cellar or small room. It means multicellular organisms made up of more than one cell which perform different function in the body and also form various body parts. For example, fungi, plants and animals. Ma'am, nuclear membrane is also an important part of the cell. Yes, Anand. Nuclear membrane is a double-layered covering of the nucleus. On the basis of presence of nuclear membrane and organelles, cells are of two types. They are prokaryotic cells. Cells in which the nuclear material is not enclosed by nuclear membrane and membrane bound, cell organelle are absent. The organism possesses these kind of cells is known as prokaryotes. Example, bacteria. Eukaryotic cells. Cells having well-defined nucleus and membrane-bound cell organelle is termed as eukaryotic cell. The organism possesses these kind of cells is known as eukaryotes. Ma'am, can you give us detailed information about these two cells? Sure, Anand. We will start with general structure of a prokaryotic cell. This figure shows the generalized structure of a prokaryotic cell. All prokaryotes have chromosomal DNA localized in a nucleoid, ribosomes, a cell membrane and a cell wall. Eukaryotic cells contain membrane bond organelles including a nucleus. Eukaryotes can be single-celled or multi-celled such as you, me, plants, fungi and insects. The eukaryotic cells are of two types. They are plant cell and animal cell. How can we signify these two cells? Good question. There are certain characteristics of both plant and animal cells which signify it. Plant and animal cells have several differences and similarities. Now, we are going to discuss about the difference between plant and animal cells. They are First one is shape. Animal cell is look like round or irregular shape. Whereas, plant cells are rectangular shape. Second one is cell wall. It is absent in animal cell. While, cell wall is present in the plant cell in the form of cellulose. Third is plasma membrane. In animal cell, only cell membrane is present. Whereas, in plant cell, cell membrane is present but with cell wall. Fourth, centrioles. In animal cells, centrioles are present. Whereas, in plant cell, centrioles are present only in lower plants. Fifth, chloroplast. Animal cell do not have chloroplast. Plant cells have chloroplast because they make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. Sixth, plastid. In animal cell, there is absence of plastid. But in plant cells, plastids are present. Plastid is a major double membranous organelle found in the cell of the plant and the algae that contain chlorophyll that can carry out photosynthesis. Next is vacuole. Small vacuole are present. Or we can say, vacuoles are smaller than plant or plant cell. In plant cell, one large central vacuole is present, taking up 90% of cell volume. Both plants and animals are made up of cell. Is there any similarities between both cells? Yes, students. Now I am talking about the similarities between animal cell and plant cell. Cytoplasm, ribosomes, 
माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रिया इंडोप्लाज्मिक रेटिकुलम गॉल्जी कॉम्प्लेक्स माइक्रोट्यूब्यूल्स ऑल आर प्रेजेंट इन एनिमल एज वेल एज इन प्लांट सेल सो स्टूडेंट दैट्स ऑल फॉर टूडेज क्लास इन नेक्स्ट क्लास वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ अ सेल